Welcome to Chem 2311. My name is Dr. Mike Evans, and I'll be your guide through the wonderful world of organic chemistry this semester. I wanted to start the semester off in this first video by talking a little bit about this question, what is organic chemistry? And I'm actually going to say very little about what organic chemistry actually is in terms of the boundaries of the field, you know, what's organic chemistry, what's not, and more so about how organic chemists think and how we're going to think throughout this semester and how it's different from your introductory chemistry experience. So there are really four ways that I see in which your organic chemistry experience is going to be different from your general chemistry experience. The first is that organic chemistry is heuristic and not algorithmic. And by this, I mean that organic chemistry deals with heuristics. A simpler word for heuristics is simply rules. Whereas general chemistry, you can get by thinking about general chemistry in terms of algorithms, which are much more like deductive processes, meaning they take an input of information, and this is usually quantitative information in, in terms of a set of numbers, and you apply a series of steps to that information, and out comes an answer, and often that answer is also quantitative. And so while it's often a big struggle to get general or introductory chemistry students used to the idea that you have to think about chemical models and the submicroscopic picture and the concepts underlying problem solving, the actual act of problem solving itself is often deductive in nature. That's not often the case in organic chemistry. Organic chemistry more often deals with rules. And an analogy I like to use here is the analogy of driving and the rules of the road. Um, when you're driving a car and you're obeying these so-called rules of the road, it's not exactly a deductive process. You're not following a step-by-step -step series of actions that get you from your starting point to your destination. You may change your approach midway through. You may decide on a route based on how you've always done things and check Google Maps halfway through your drive and change your route. You may change around the sequence of steps you use to start the car based on extra luggage you have, things like this. The rules that we talk about in heuristic reasoning are, are things that are not necessarily set in stone the way an algorithm is set in stone. They're probabilistic. And as you progress in your education, it's going to become ever more important to start thinking probabilistically, meaning you're waiting possibilities by the likelihood of their being correct or coming true or being reasonable, for example. We're going to talk a lot about situations and concepts and problems that involve probabilistic reasoning where you're making decisions. And this is all about heuristics or rules. The second way organic chemistry differs from general chemistry is that it's process-oriented, not answer-oriented. And we kind of got at this in the last example. But the idea here is that Whereas the idea in general chemistry is often to get to, quote unquote, the answer, right? There's some number we're trying to get to, and often that, that number has value, right? Maybe we're trying to get to uh, the pressure of a gas using the ideal gas law or the number of moles we need to um, use in a chemical reaction, for example. In introductory chemistry, the answer, quote unquote, is often our end goal. But in organic chemistry, it's all about the process. And this gets back to the heuristic reasoning point. We're applying these rules in a process-oriented manner to translate information we're given, which is often visual, which will come in the next point, uh, into an answer that is not necessarily the answer, but one of a number of possibilities that, probabilistically speaking, is the most likely to be true or the most likely outcome to take place. And I strongly encourage you to think in a process-oriented manner in Chem 2311 rather than an answer-oriented manner. This answer-oriented approach to organic chemistry is what gives it its reputation for being a memorization-driven course. This is, in fact, not true at all if you approach organic chemistry from a process-oriented standpoint. It's about the heuristics you apply, how you apply them, which is the process involved, and how you translate applying those heuristics into often a visual output in the form of an organic structure.
The third way organic chemistry differs from introductory chemistry is that it's visual, not quantitative. It's often qualitative rather than quantitative. So where we use numbers in introductory chemistry to represent various experimental variables, for example, we tend to use pictures in organic chemistry. And so, you know, the typical thing here and something that we're going to use throughout this course and your next organic course is Lewis structures, for example. We're going to deepen the theory of Lewis structures. We're going to connect Lewis structures to deeper, deeper concepts from physical chemistry. And so all of the information that you're going to learn in organic chemistry is going to be filtered through a visual system, through the visual system of Lewis structures. So for example, interpreting Lewis structures visually, something I'll talk about here in a second, is going to become extremely important throughout your time in organic chemistry. Finally, organic chemistry is about complexity and depth rather than simplicity and breadth. So the way I like to think about this is in introductory chemistry, we're serving a large student population. Students come from a variety of majors and are in the course for a variety of purposes. And so simplicity and breadth are valuable. It's a general chemistry course that gives the student a general sense of how chemistry works. But those who take organic chemistry are to some extent, to a greater or lesser extent, going to use that understanding in their actual profession. And so we're moving from a more generalized understanding to a more professional or specialized understanding of how chemistry works. And in particular, we're going to do things like, for example, take that idea of Lewis structures and really drill down deep into what a Lewis structure represents in terms of orbital theory and in terms of electron density and how to interpret a Lewis structure and infer reactivity from it. So it's about complexity and depth, and you want to keep that in mind as well moving through organic chemistry, that it's less about generalized understanding and more about specialization.